Hey everyone, this is Mr. Isometric and in this video, we are going to talk about floor bone constraint. Now this constraint, the way it is made, uh, it actually logically doesn't make sense. So yeah, I'll try my best to explain this constraint. So let us do the usual. Let us turn on the name and let's turn on the axis. I will make the axis 0.5 so that we can see the local axis. We can also go into the wireframe mode so that we can see it better. Now let's add the constraint on our bone number one. Let's add the floor bone constraint and it is asking for a target. It can be object or it can be an armature bone. So I'm going to select my armature and uh, my this bone is going to be the floor bone. And as soon as I do that, if I move this bone up and down, you'll see that uh, my bone number one, it is constrained to the floor bone over there so wherever the head of this bone is it will act as a floor so if i move it up as you can see my bone is moving with the floor and now if i grab this bone and if i move it you'll see that it is staying on the floor it is not moving beyond the floor also if you might have noticed when i grab it on the z it moves a little bit more and then it starts moving the bone and there is a reason for that now this constraint doesn't uh, reset your uh, local position of the bone and from that what I mean is if you press N and then go into the items you'll see that we have a location socket over here and for this bone number one our location is all set to 0 0 0 and as soon as I move this bone the value changes if I move this in the negative direction as you can see the minus 0.69 that location should be reset because we are at the floor but it uh, doesn't work like that it will first make itself zero so like this and as soon as it uh, goes beyond zero it will start moving the bone and i think the reason why they don't reset the position is because we can also animate our floor dynamically like we can change our floor on the fly so also having it beyond the value is kind of useful i guess so do make sure that your uh, if your bone is not moving uh, just check that its location is either zero or something of the offset value like something beyond the offset value like let us suppose say if i move this uh, bone one unit up then this bone as it is negative uh, 69 okay I, if i just make it zero uh, you'll see that it is still not moving and it has to now go one unit up and after that one unit it will start moving so do keep in mind that you also have a little bit of offset uh, after an offset it will start moving so let me just reset everything nice uh, i will also hide this panel now let's talk about the offset so if you add an offset you'll see that i can adjust my starting position of the bone so right now the offset from this uh, this bone's head uh, we just added one unit of offset in z direction because our z direction is selected and it added uh unit one offset over there and as you can see it is working uh like my bone was actually one unit up uh, and also it will keep that offset constant so i think this offset value is more for adjusting your foot with the floor so yeah do use this uh really handy so now let's talk about uh minimum and maximum and after this part all of these things like this three uh things which is uh minimum maximum use rotation checkbox and this target and owner spaces they kind of doesn't make sense but i hope i do a good job of explaining them so as you just saw that we have selected the z axis to be our floor but what if now i select the y axis uh, and you'll see that now globally my y axis is being clamped over there so now my y is this axis as you can see this is my y axis the green axis and we cannot move beyond that axis so there you go also the direction matters so negative y if i select that you'll see that my bone it cannot move beyond that negative value so now my bone it is on the negative side of the y and it is the direction where my floor is so floor obviously has a direction you cannot go inside the floor so right now negative is my floor now if i make it positive x then you'll see that if i move over there you'll see that my x axis is now a floor i cannot move beyond that um, and i think to better visualize it i think it is better if i add a plane 
So let me add a plane. Let's scale it infinitely like this. And let me just add a rotation and scale. So right now X is our floor. So let me just rotate this by 90 degrees and let's go back into the pose mode. Now positive X is my floor and I think I have to rotate this on the Z by 90. Okay. So right now our positive X is the floor. So basically this is our floor right now. Okay. I hope uh, this is uh, clear. Uh, and if I choose negative X, it will go to the other side. And now this is my floor on this side. I cannot no longer move on the other side. Okay. So now that is done. Let's go ahead and learn more about the use rotation. So when I check use rotation, but before I do that, let me just uh, select z as our uh, floor so let me also make sure that our z is the floor like this and now let's go back into the pose mode okay so i have selected z as my floor but now if i check use rotation my target bones uh will be used as a floor so my target bones z axis is the floor so right now uh my floor is something like this so let me just rotate so right now this is the floor and the way this is useful is that now you can have a custom floor so as you can see that that nothing has uh, changed much yet uh, but a really cool thing about this constraint that now I can have a 45 degree floor like this uh, in the opposite direction okay so what I did just now is made my floor go like this a 45 degree in the negative direction okay so as you can see that now my floor is set on 45 degree so what is this doing so right now as I said logically this doesn't make sense so when you use rotation my local Z axis will be taken as the floor right uh, but then this actually make target and owner worlds like this spaces they it kind of makes it useless also they don't work the way you think they work yeah I, I'll say that mostly keep things world space and just use the use rotation to change your floor or you can just uh, remove and add the target bone or uh, any object. So right now, as you can see, my floor is this. I can again go back and then animate this bone. I can rotate it by 45 degree more. And now my floor has changed. If I make it uh, go negative 45 degree like this. Okay, um, so now this is my floor. Same thing goes over here. If you choose negative axis, then your floor will be in downwards direction and you can no longer move in upwards direction. So let me just uh, make everything reset. And now you'll see that if I uncheck the use rotation and if you think that making this to local space and keeping our owner in the world space and if I now rotate this in the X axis like this, you might think that positive Z axis is pointing that way so my floor it should be 45 degree but it is actually not it is still working the way it is so right now unless and until you make sure that your use rotation is checked it will not take the rotation of your bone into account so making this into local space is actually useless so just keep it at the world space uh, and now if I go ahead and make my owner to the local space this still kind of doesn't make sense because now as I have chosen my my z axis is actually the floor so right now I will be clamped in my local local z axis and not actually the world axis okay but now if i rotate it like this uh, like 90 degree you know what let me just go back into the wireframe mode that's much more easier to understand okay now as you just saw that yeah it is definitely clamping me in my local axis right like my local z axis is uh, stop uh, like it is stopping at the origin where my local axis is but what doesn't make sense is that if I rotate this bone now like say 90 degrees so now my z is pointing that way and now if I move you'll see that I can still move freely but my axis it is clamping itself uh, where my z axis was initially so initially it was like this but now as soon as I rotate it like this it should clamp itself here but it doesn't uh, it's still clamps itself over in this axis so yeah that 
actually it doesn't make sense and i don't know why blender has this target and owner if you are using this use rotation checkbox anyways so yeah i'll just say that keep the world and owner to the world space and if you want to have a custom rotated floor then you can always use use rotation and then have some offset and that way you can use floor bone constraint now this is really handy when you have hands of the character and you don't want any of the bone to move beyond the floor so adding this constraint while animating something like a spider-man character and you want its feet to not go beyond the floor yeah like uh, many use cases that you can think about it if you have watched my previous video this influence slider it is like a weight value or a boolean value to turn this constraint on and off if you make this value other than one or zero any middle value will act as a weight value for this constraint like if you have a constraint on top of it if you have constraint on bottom then uh, they will either override themselves or they will uh, just act like it is a weight value so yeah keep that at one you can also animate any of the value that has this dot so yeah that's how this constraint works i'm talking about all of this constraint in their own separate videos all of those videos are in one single playlist link will be in the description below also watching all your comments and likes they really inspire me to make more such videos so yeah do hit that subscribe button like this video and share it with your friends if you want join the discord server if you need any personalized help and yeah thank you all so much for watching i'll see you in the next video bye bye